Okay, so when we come up with the title, uh, apart from A standing for assessment, B for blended learning, C for colleagues, we thought naively that it might be the first presentation, but now it's at, at the end. So uh, thank you for staying with us. Um, my colleague, Rachel Kay, is head of economics at the British School in the Netherlands. And she's going to talk a little bit about uh, assessment and how assessment has changed within economics. Then I'm going to give a, a kind of slant on what I think blended learning is and how we've uh, approached Canvas with what we see in the classroom before Canvas. Uh, finally, talking about colleagues and collaborations and some things that we have done uh, in the sort of two and a bit years that we've introduced Canvas. Uh, I, I, I kind of need to start with this to set the context of it because um, we're in our third year. Uh, we didn't start all together. We had kind of some pioneering departments lead the way. Uh, Canvas goes across all our key stages from key stage three, four, and five. Uh, every uh, subject, every, uh, every subject, every lesson, every, uh, every class has a course. Uh, teachers can choose whether they wish an individual course or whether they wish a group course. So our design technology uh, subject has course where all the classes are in as sections. History and geography have their own courses for each class. Uh, our courses are linked to Sims. We have some form of integration. Uh, Michael Kopp, uh, who is a genius at our school, has written this amazing piece of code that actually integrates Sims with Canvas so that it's uh, over the summer when we, when we move across, the courses are made from the Sims timetable. Uh, it requires a little bit of checking and updating now and then, but it, it saves a huge amount of time. We have one-to-one -one devices. Uh, prior to uh, two years ago, they were iPads. We are now a fully Surface Pro school. That's staff and students and support staff all having the same device. There are no PCs in classrooms. There is no server area. Everything is now in the cloud and Office 365. A massive change. And a change I think is really important to acknowledge whilst we talk about Canvas because Canvas is one part of this kind of this uh, strategy and culture. So, over to Rachel. Okay, so I'm hoping to be able to just share a little bit about how we've used Canvas in economics lessons, really for assessments in terms of short activities as well as um, longer tasks. Um, and our use of Canvas has changed over time, really. Initially, it was just a way of sharing existing resources with students. Um, we're now using Canvas much more um, for the tools that it's got included, um, things like lesson activities and homeworks especially. Um, and in the future, I hope to really improve the use of rubrics um, for student feedback. It's something we've started um, already, but it's definitely something where there's room for improvement. Um, and also developing question banks. There's a new feature in Canvas where you can develop question banks with different styles of questions. Um, and I'm really hoping that'll help with revision and also with tracking progress for students as well. Um, the very start, our requirement was to just create a home page, um, and I was really keen to get the pages set up quickly, um, and therefore, maybe I didn't get the content quite right at the start. Um, I wanted to set up the course so that we had lesson by lesson for a whole term in advance, um, and I created the pages from that. Initially, like I said, our activities were just really standard activities that I would have used normally in a lesson, maybe on a handout or a worksheet or a PowerPoint, um, but including maybe more links to websites that might be relevant for students to look information up. Um, I've kind of moved on, um, hopefully. Um, I still use PowerPoints for lessons, but I think much more I'm using Canvas as a way of delivering the lessons and then sending off students to um, complete particular activities. Um, but it's very much with the teacher present. We don't do a kind of um, an online course or a virtual course. It's very much with the teacher um, in the room. Um, I really want to be able to use it to improve assessment with students and quick questions at the start of lessons and at the end of lessons give me an idea of where students are at the start and they can show their progress and um, we can use true or false questions um, and moderating the quizzes enables me to see um, where students areas of understanding or perhaps areas of confusion are and hopefully by the end of the lesson there are fewer areas of confusion. 
Um, hopefully. Um, multiple choice questions are a big part of economics. It's part of the exam. And despite the fact that some teachers who don't use multiple choice questions think it's an easy option, it's actually really quite difficult. And students are often um, lulled into a false sense of security and choose the wrong answer. So hopefully these multiple choice questions give students lots of practice. And again, the idea of being able to build a question bank is just brilliant. Um, the old style quizzes were fine, but the new style quizzes I think are much, much better. Um, there's much more variety in terms of what students can do. Um, I'm still experimenting with these. Um, I've started to put together question banks, drop down boxes and pictures as well, especially in the quizzes um, I like. Um, the students seem to like it too, and I think they like the layout and the fact that they can work independently. Um, multiple choice questions with here are um, a picture as a hint for the answer to the question, but you can also include diagrams and video clips and um, all sorts of different things, which makes it much more interactive, I think. Um, we've used drop-down boxes and sorting activities. I still like cutting up pieces of paper, and I still like students moving things around on the table, um, but this is much more efficient, I think, um, and they seem to like it too, so always a bonus. Filling in the blanks, again, super easy to do, um, especially if, you're already, if you've already got resources um, created, just pressing the enter key gives the blank words, um, and students can make notes without really realizing they're making notes, which is perfect. Um, in the future, I really want to develop rubrics um, for assessment and for more effective feedback and for students reacting to feedback. Um, I'm a big fan of them. Um, in terms of students being able to see where their next steps are, um, but it's something that needs to be developed. These are my question banks so far, some of them very unpopulated with questions, but I think that idea of little and often um, works well with this, and we can just keep adding questions lesson by lesson, and over time, by the end of this year or next year, hopefully we'll have lots of questions which we can then create um, tests at the end of subjects, at the end of topics, or as revision activities for students. So I'll hand back to Gideon now for our blended room. Um, about two years ago, when we, uh, we looked at uh, replacing Edmodo, which was our kind of learning platform, and uh, we spent over a year uh, looking at different uh, learning platforms. Uh, and it came down to two. It came down to Canvas and another one that's got a red badge a red background with an F on it. Uh, but overwhelmingly, uh, our staff recognized, possibly as a reflection of what we had before, the need for change and the features that Canvas could bring to their existing lesson. So this is this little bit's about the kind of blended learning. And, and I, I start with a, with a definition, only because I think bent, blended learning is banded around and often possibly we're not quite so sure about it. I sort of take it in terms of this, actually bringing in the digital technology to the classroom, not remote learning. One of the questions that we had set up in the, uh, in the, uh, the session before was asking what could we learn from universities? And I think our use of Canvas in school is very different in terms of what, what I see from, from our colleagues at, at higher edge and, and university. Our approach is very much about it being used in the classroom. So with that in mind, I am that old, uh, my PGCE, uh, these are the kind of three bits of notes that I took away from when I started. You know, planning learning objectives, designing the task to support student-centered learning, and effective resources to deliver the learning. And, and what, what's true for acetates and OHPs is absolutely true for digital resources. I see no difference really in that approach. And it was certainly the thing that I led with when talking to staff. Because I think, and, and you know, I'm a bit of a Doctor Who fan, but I think the approach that when you bring in computers and technology in the classroom, this idea that suddenly our students are transformed, heads down, tapping on the screen with no engagement, no interaction at all. But definitely not that. So um, these are the kind of five S's that we try 
uh, that we kind of aim for Canvas to support in the classroom, and I haven't got time to go through them all, but it's, it's very similar, familiar to what uh, you've heard throughout the day. You know, supporting what we do, supplementing it either in the class or outside, substituting things that we know work better and quicker and easier and can be replicated quicker, stretching it through extension tasks uh, and specific aspects. But to quote badly from JFK, this strategy is the most effective when I think when looking at how we want Canvas to get involved in blended learning. And it's a trap that I fall into all the time. And it's this not to fall into. So when talking to our staff, asking not what the tech can do for them, but what they would like to do. So leading with the learning, not leading with the tech. It's very easy, and I heard the word evangelist being used earlier on the session. I'm an evangelist too. I'm very passionate about technology. It's very easy to throw out Kahoot, Quizlet, H5P is these amazing tools for getting actually the process is actually what's the learning, yeah? What are the outcomes here? So I apologize to GFK, but uh, the, the cart before the horse, if you're on the community side, it's a fantastic blog post. If you look it up, cart before horse, fantastic contributions from people about the role of tech. So um, going back to my PGC, familiar in a classroom, familiar features that we use. And again, what I've said to our staff is, well, go to the digital classroom. We have a number of these. And it's really just a matter of saying, well, this is where they now are. I know it's maybe a bit simplified, but it is the fact that it's not hugely different. And that, that, that worry that our staff have suddenly, have I got to be an IT teacher or a computing teacher? Do I need to learn code? You know, have I got to do these things? Well, it's about reassuring staff that actually there are those things we've done, but here are other ways that we can do it. And more often than not, one activity that we used to do can suddenly be done three ways, or there are other supporting features, or things that can take them way beyond just that time that you have got. So, in terms of quick wins for this blended learning classroom, for us, this was absolutely paramount both to, st to students, to staff, and to parents, that Canvas will provide support outside of the classroom, but to our staff, you are designing resources that will make a difference. I have to say, we shied away from blueprints. We shied away from a course that was the same for everybody, and we said to our staff, choose the things that you know will make a difference that you know that either you cannot do or things that will benefit you. And as a result, lots of our courses look very, very different indeed. But I think they have features in there that are focused on that particular area. My role, I guess, is to get conversations across different areas and subjects to encourage people to think differently. I talked about this earlier on, about Office 365 integration. You know, we have all this mountain of resources, of files, PowerPoints I do, using that there. You know, I, I particularly, I'm, I'm very bad with it, that, that I'll upload something to a learning platform, I'll suddenly realize there's a mistake, I'll then have to delete that, go back, make the change and re-upload it again. The integration package, fantastic. And so many stuff I see with things like PowerPoints, put it on that platform and use it. Having it in place for all years, Making, making it very clear again to staff, students, and teachers that, uh, and parents that it is right through school, key stage three, four, and five. It is not Canvas for computing, Canvas for maths. You know, it, very, it frustrates me a lot. You know, when I look at uh, job descriptions for directors of e-learning or directors of digital strategy, and in the third line down, it says they want you to teach computing. That's not what I perceive digital learning about. It's for everybody where it makes a difference. And we've got cracking courses in drama, in P, in food technology, as well as in computing and in maths and other areas. Um, making peace with OneNote uh, was very important for us. Making it clear to staff that it wasn't an either or, that actually they could work together. The integration, the LTI with OneNote is fantastic. It helps actually set up the OneNote courses, but making it clear to staff that actually OneNote might just be for the students to use as a digital book. You don't have to then go and create 
the same course on one note that you've got on Canvas. Uh, and it's still, you know, there's still a bit of competition involved in it, and we're still trying to look at the best bits for it. Again, we talked earlier about the stylus and the role of the stylus can get being used on Canvas. You know, I think we'll see more work go there. Um, oh, gosh. Um. <laughs> Homework on the Canvas calendar. We did, I know one thing we took from another learning platform was this idea that if it wasn't on Canvas, there's no homework. We didn't quite say that in a letter to parents, but it was the kind of the general thing. And, and that's, been a, you know, that's been a big win, uh, as has this. We don't give parents access to Canvas yet, but uh, through some, some nice kind of coding and stuff, parents have access to the calendar. They have access to the calendar in a very different design and layout, but we make sure that the focus of the calendar is where the homework is written on the course, and it's in enough detail that parents don't need to then maybe ask questions about what is going on in the course. Yes, they can look over the shoulder of their child to see what's going on, but you know, as a parent, just want to be reassured that that is the homework, and actually there are resources there to help you. And hopefully those resources are links to stuff that you've already got in modules and courses. We're not doubling up. Um, last bit, and we've only done this, actually this term, but it, 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 it is, I think it's a stroke of genius, is looking at the school terms, or looking at the terms bit in Canvas, and matching them to the qualifications. So our GCSE courses are two years now. Our A-level courses in IB are two years now. So hopefully we won't face that kind of mad changeover when we're kind of looking to update various courses. Uh, and, and I think that's hopefully going to be a big win. Finally, the student to-do list. Um, we were incredibly frustrated as a UK school. Year nine, for example, I think there were 25 courses that students had, and we could only get 10, up to 15 on the calendar at one time. The student to-do list has changed all of that, and I think it's perfect. I think it is really, really good. And I love the idea that students can add in their own to-do bits too. And the fact that also now you can add in Canvas pages to the to-do list. So it's not just about assignments. You know, you can actually add in a bit on reading or a section to do, so that's really good. So the secret to blending, having gone through all of that, is this, <laughs> is use modules. It's like use sunscreen, use modules. I find now that when I have my conversation with staff, I talk about modules because I think modules are the nearest thing to how we possibly plan lessons or plan chunks of work. Um, I, 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 I have, you know, I, I, I try to say stuff, listen, I know you've got all that stuff in the files and folders. I know you moved it all over from the shared area, but that's just not something we want to give to our students. I jokingly talk about a, not a repository, but a suppository, because there's so much stuff there, and it's not the way to do it. But with modules, you've got control. Turn them on, turn them off, add all those different features in, structure them, use the text headers, use the indentation. And suddenly when you do that, so there's a bit more control. And it's a bit like how we plan our lessons. Not saying that we have to have lesson by lesson, but at least give it some sort of structure. And so some nice features now in Canvas. You can actually have a feature of some code. If you've got, uh, you can actually automatically hide the modules so they remain closed. And then if you put a button to it, that module will automatically open. It's quite a nice little feature because modules can get, well, yeah, can get quite a lot. So from B to C, from blended through to this idea of uh, teachers collaborating and sharing. So this uh, I pulled from a, a great blog from Lee Crockett about blended learning. Uh, but what he mentions with the trick to blended learning is this idea that it's practice. You know, and I encourage our staff to do as much as they can, try things out. If it fails, you know, Try it again, do some things, learn from it. But I like the idea that it's about engaging students and allowing them to be creative. And when I talk with staff, I try as much as I can to encourage them to create a dialogue on Canvas with their students, to create resources that are on there that students are going to respond to, not just simply, you know, file after file after file after file with the odd assessment. Some engaging stuff, particularly for lower years. So on our C for colleagues and collaboration, I'm going to start with the EdTech strategy. I absolutely agree 
that culture eats strategy for breakfast. Uh, but I was trying to think where, where strategy was. I think strategy tells culture that it is breakfast time. I don't know. Um, we, we didn't start with a strategy. And I think if we had an ed tech strategy in place, it probably would have made some of the ambitions that we wanted with Canvas uh, to stick a bit more. So this is our school's ed tech strategy. It involves Canvas and involves other things. You know, it involves badging, which is absolutely wonderful. And there's a range of things. And it's just a good thing to be able to refer to. It's a good thing to go back and say, listen, it's part of what we do. Um, the other thing is I do think you need someone like that. Uh, not necessarily me, um, but you, you need somebody in your school who has a dedicated role to lead on digital strategy. I, I, I despair when I hear stories of people who, who are the, the Canvas lead or the VLE lead, and they've got two free periods a week to do it on. You know? Plus, you, there has to be a mandate. The person that leads it has to have some responsibility, has to be able to say, listen, these are what we are doing. Or at least be able to say, and if you're not going to do that, let me refer you to, <laughs> to the person above. That, that mandate is hugely important. Yeah? And not as a stick, but that there has to be that point where actually if we're moving with our ed tech strategy as a school, then you know, we need to follow that. Nextly, this person has to be given the opportunity to drive change. I'm hugely fortunate. I, I have a 20% timetable. Uh, you know, I, I, and the rest of my time is Canvas, Office 365, badges, I, I, online, offline, with colleagues dropping into lessons, doing, you know, doing mini training sessions. That is my role. And without that time, you know, I don't think we, we, we would have progressed as far as we could. And of course, coming from that is definitely support and backing every year, making sure that actually the school is prepared to invest in me and my role and what I want to do with our staff. So, starting in terms of our kind of sharing and collaborative journey, we sort of began with this. And this was an interesting take that we, we did when we first began, because I recognized that, that, that our staff were at different stages, both in their competence and their confidence with digital learning. So we sort of created this, borrowed this from a, another learning platform, and I, I liked the idea that these were different, different stages. And I said to our departments and our staff, choose where you are at. Choose a place where you are comfortable and begin there. With the proviso that the following year, move up. And by the way, geography, if you're at level one, let me tell you about English because you're at level two and go and have a chat with English. So what that does is invariably the chat is about teaching and learning and pedagogy because actually you leave your content at the door in most cases and you're talking about learning and teaching. And, and you know, we avoid all those issues about, I've got to get this done, there's this amount, da 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 da. And it's a good framework to cling on to. I, I could have done more with it, I think I should have done in terms of going back to it and referring it. Something we're gonna plan later on in terms of using it as a way of checking courses. But uh, I, I like the idea of different stages and different steps and people looking to where they are. And obviously some people use different bits within it. It wasn't just at all at one, some people had some elements of two. But it was reassuring people that actually we didn't all have to be at four and a half, yeah? Because for some people actually, doing A-level courses, I had all this stuff that I just wanted to kind of put, you know, online. My PowerPoints and my PDFs. Nextly, nextly, next, was this idea of, of targets. Now, we have targets, I, I guess, like any other education establishment. One thing I certainly have found with digital strategy is making sure that you have a whole school target for it, and then, if you can, linking digital learning to that whole school strategy, but not working with personal targets. Align digital strategy to department targets, to department development plans. So we're not having discussions with individuals, you're having discussions with teams. You're talking about the strengths within the team, you're getting people talking and sharing openly about what they are doing in the classroom. 
And you, it, it's a far more open, fruitful, honest, positive, non-threatening discussion. Because it's not about somebody's fault if they haven't done it or somebody's responsible to do that. It's that department area. And I found that works far better. Also, I, I, I don't have, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a senior leader. I don't have access to, pers quite right, to personal targets. So actually, here's another way of pushing the digital strategy forward that way. Next, get people talking. We did this for a while, and it was hugely successful. Uh, the, 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 the cheat sheet, or the... We called it Teach Eat Takeaway. Just turning up at a lunchtime and talking about some stuff that you've done. And, and teachers are wonderful because the first thing that people will say is, I'm not sure if this is any good, but... And invariably, it's just the most amazing thing that you have seen that you could never have achieved. And I love it. And I love doing that. And it was just fantastic seeing colleagues doing that. Having a bit of a chat you know, in, in their lunchtime about things that went on. And then getting ideas from other people. And we gave little kind of business cards to be handed out to people. It was kind of cool. Kind of cool. Um, next thing, I, you know, I can't emphasize this enough. Make it open. Just, just, just share things with people. Promote things. We had a colleague that, 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 that put lots of YouTube videos in food technology, put them into fantastic tables of how to carry out particular recipes and whatever. It was just the most amazing thing. But then it inspired other colleagues to say, actually, I could use YouTube as a particular way of doing it. So share all these ideas, promote them, praise people as much as you can. Things that we do, and I'm sure you do this too, staff shout outs, emails. We've got a Canvas blog where I try and take ideas from staff and uh, push them out to the community. Uh, ABCD, little notes about what people have done beyond what they're meant to do. We've got a 24-7 Canvas group, of, again, of, 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 of experts that share things, so it's not just that kind of top-down approach with me kind of saying, here's things to do, people take that away. Teaching and learning groups, pop-ins. I drop in to department areas. I base myself there for a day and say, right, you come to me in your free time, what would you like to talk about? So I go to the department, the department going to me. Tenant CPD, student recommendations, hugely powerful. Students recommending fantastic practice to staff. Oh, staff get such a kick out of it. Uh, here's the glitz, of course. Can't forget the glitz. You make, you know, things to make the Canvas courses engaging and interesting. I, I some fantastic buttons I saw from the last speaker. You know, just doing colorful little things and some really good stuff. Uh, embedding tools as well. I try to focus on as much embedded stuff on pages. Really important. My training, my training, I'm always in the community looking at new ideas, trying to ask questions about it again. And then something that I do uh, in school, which has worked amazingly well, this is Calendly, which links to my Office 365, links to my uh, calendar, and I put my timetable on my calendar so staff can book time to talk to me, either an hour, 30 minutes, 50 minutes, in their own time. So they can see when they are free, when I am free, and they book me. So it's not an after-school thing. It's an as and when. And that works really well, particularly if I'm really worried I've got something I need to do tomorrow. Can you help me with this thing? Yes, I'm free. Let's go and do it. Staff training. All our training kind of looks like this. Again, there was a, a, a great comment there about making staff students. All staff become students when they do the training, so they get to see what it's like as a student and engage. Uh, and we often kind of you know, have one course up that's just with their teachers and one course with their pupils. Uh, remote training, again, we've all got this, kind of just resources where people can go and, go and see and go and look at in their own time, lots of video guides and help guides and other things. But then also, not forgetting that C is for our children, our students. And we've employed a genius bar uh, where students man it and support other students and staff with a whole range of uh, ed tech issues. We, uh, we've put help for the students on our Canvas course, so that's as you go on to students, the students can go and get various resources. Email Canvas support is me, by the way. They don't know it's me, but it's, it, but it's me. They go, well, they do know it's me. Um, and then our, our plans for this year um, is to, this is run by our, our, our Genius Bar, is to create a WordPress blog where we actually have FAQs and questions. And we've put it 
uh, through a username and password. So again, it's protected. So they have to put in their school email address and school pa or their school username and password. So again, our, our tech guys have helped with that. So the idea of, again, remote support. Our next steps are many. And I have about a minute to go. Loads of ones that are there. Uh, things I'm particularly interested in, Canvas in our junior schools, about how our students can actually kind of experience some fantastic things in Canvas before they come in. Um, looking at how our parents, our parents want to be on Canvas. They desperately want to be there. I just need to make sure that they're there for all the right reasons. And we need to look at the grades in the grade book and what it means and actually what message we're giving out. Um, I'm really interested in quiz questions. The new quiz tool allows you to put individual questions into banks. You can then create outcomes from banks and then tie outcomes to mastery. So I like the idea that potentially you could have 10 questions about a particular area of understanding in a course, and then straight away you can see as a teacher whether the student knows that, and you get some fantastic graph work. A badger and pathways, a badger I've spelt as in the animal, not the, the fee. Pathways look really exciting, interesting. And Canvas Course Checker, designing something with the quiz where staff can go in, answer questions, and see where their course is at in terms of that one, two, three, four, five, and give advice about where their next steps would be. I like the idea of a remote sport. There's something out there, I think, in the community. There's a course there where you can do that. Again, just to, to tie that to what we are doing. Um, and that's that. Oh, and as always, it started with critical friend. It ends with a critical friend. Keep on pushing Canvas. Keep on pushing for that change. Keep on pushing for that change that reflects what we do within the UK, within K-12 too. Absolutely.